Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name's Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be using one of Tom Wolfe's patterns. Tom Wolfe has written many carving books. Um, and this is one of his patterns. This is a hound dog and it's in two different positions. Uh, and a raccoon. We'll see what we can do with that. Um, we're going to start with the dog. I am going to make this dog <clears throat> with an insert for the tail. So I'm going to be doing the tail separately and inserting it into the dog. Because if I cut them all out of one piece of wood, the wood coming up through the tail would be a cross grain and would, would just break off really, really easy. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Here we got our piece of wood. And we are going to spray a little spray adhesive, put them on here, take them to the bandsaw, cut them out. We're also going to talk a little bit about a couple of new knives that I got. <clears throat> These are OCC knives. And, uh, and so we'll discuss these knives a little bit. I used, I used both of these already on my carving of the little Yoda, the baby Yoda. Um, and we'll be using them during this carving as well. So here's the dog pattern cut out. You can see that because of this line right here and this line right here, that makes these legs on the other side. So this center line, always do a center line on all your carvings. Got a center line all the way around. This and this will be removed to the center line. So these legs will be the most forward on this side. These legs, because of these lines, opposite of the other side, will be removed to the center. So these, these two legs will be on this side. These two legs will be on this side. I did take a, a coping saw and just cut what I could. It wasn't much because I would start getting to uh, into other areas and and couldn't do it. But uh, everything else is knife work. So let's take a quick look at these OCC knives. This one is uh, they're both. I purchased them from mountainwoodcarvers.com. This is a one and three eighths inch. Um, turning it back and forth, I can see a little bit of sanding marks on it still, um, but it's sharp. It's been stropped. I don't feel a, a burr. Let's take a quick look at the other one. So this one is Walnut Whittler. 1.25 best seller. So one and a quarter. Once again, I, I do see the marks from the sander on it. So as I strop it, those those marks will go away. 
but for right out of the box, remember I'm taking this leg, all of this away. <clears throat> Let's see what it's like. Oh, yeah. This is really nice polish. Ooh. That is bigger than I usually take. That is a, that's a hunk of wood right there. Usually I go for smaller pieces. So I've been carving for a lot of years and um, I do have arthritis a little bit in this finger. So I try not to push too hard. But uh, if you don't have arthritis, you can still carve. You just have to uh, take it easy, you know. Go for smaller shavings. Do the cut, cut stop right up here near the body. Now on this back leg, I did do a cut stop with a saw. So I'm not too worried about splitting anything out. Quite a ways to go. There it is. So now you can see here's the leg we want to keep because it's attached to this side of the body, and this leg will be on this side of the body. Now, Tom Wolf, <clears throat> these, this pattern is the Tom Wolf pattern. Tom Wolf uh, has been carving a long, long time. He was very popular in the carving world when I was getting interested in carving. He had books. Computers weren't around back then. Um, we just had books uh, that you could pick up from different places. Um, and Tom Wolf had a whole bunch of different books. Um, so he's a bit of a legend in my mind. He was one of the first um, carving books that I got. And he, he went step by step in these books and showed both pictures and in writing, um, how to do carvings, how to do different types of carvings. He did characters, and uh, there's one called Bunny and Bears. I have that book. I have a Civil War soldier book that he put out. Um, so, yeah, there's a, a lot of different uh, books that he put out, and he did a lot, there's a lot of characters, and really good carver too all right so now let's go for this leg and I can't get a saw in to this so we're gonna just start doing a series of um, little V cuts and just work away at it. Now 
Now, if you have an idea of how to get in and, and take out half a leg, I don't know, maybe an oscillating cutter straight in, that might speed things up a little bit. A gouge certainly would speed up things a lot. Let me know. Let me know how you think you would do it. Be interesting to see. I gotta be careful because, like I say, there there isn't a a cut through like this leg had. If something splits off here, um, could could be catastrophic. Maximum control by bracing my hand, getting close. And put the stop cut here. I didn't show you the the blade here. It's kind of like a drop point blade. I kind of like that. The these are both drop point. This handle's bigger. This one's smaller. realize something the grain is running this way these legs are going to be weak hmm should have run the grain up and down and these that way these legs would be really strong and I could have put the tail in Mm, I'm just going to have to make sure I make these legs a little bit bulky, a little bit on the, on the thicker side. I can't tell you how many carvings that I've had over the years that for some reason they got broken. And uh, to put all this work into them and then they break. Um, yeah, kind of. For regardless of what reason, you know, a cat knocks it off or a, um, somebody picks it up to admire it and drops it and whatever the, the reason, it's heartbreaking to, to lose a piece after, you know, you spent so much time on it. So I always try to make my carvings as strong as I can make them. See how that leg is going back. I'll we'll do these two the same way. I'll cut these back to halfway. Now I don't know if you've noticed, but look at the nicks in this blade. 
Now, I haven't done anything unusual. I've been carving a long time and I've never had a blade do that. It's no disappointing. Now, I'm not blaming the company for it itself because there's a lot of reasons why uh, metal can fail like that. Um, that's going to take a heck of a lot of sharpening to get that those nicks out of there. Um, but I tell you what, I, I do a whole lot of carving with just an X-Acto blade, cheap X-Acto blades, and I've never had one of them nick up like that before i use this i use this particular brand because the the grip holding the blade has four inserts so it it really holds much better than a standard exacto uh the adjustment is is down here so it's just an all-around nicer handle and in these, this is a knockoff. This, the Exacto number 11 blade is basically what that is, but I can pick up a hundred of those for like 11 bucks uh, and just change them out when they get dull. If I was a beginner, that's my go-to right there. This is what I teach beginners with. All right, so here we go. We got the legs locked out. See how these two have been cut back. These two have been cut back. So now we're ready to round it out. Now I don't have a top pattern for this, but I did lightly pencil the basic shape of a dog on there. I do know what a dog looks like so you know have a general idea and it'll take form as as we go onward sped things up a little bit two times the speed and you can see here we're carving down into the valley there from both sides uh, if you ever try to carve uphill you'll learn quickly that you're carving against the grain and it will just split out so you are always carved downhill not uphill I'll have a little bit of a, a transition part in the bottom and it, it's it can be pretty tricky trying to get that smooth with just a knife so where the two cuts downhill come together in the middle uh, if you can't get that smooth no worries you can easily take a rasp to it or just a little sandpaper won't take much uh, and you can smooth it right out So as you can see, I'm going around just cutting a, a 45 off the corners. And what that does is it just makes it a lot more comfortable to hold in your hand. Um, you know, you're basically using your hand as a vise and you're holding this piece of wood. And those sharp edges can get to you after a while. So you just knock off the edges with 45 degree all the way around uh, and it just becomes a much more pleasurable experience uh, to hold it and to uh, and, and it gives you a good head start because then you can take that 45 and put two more bevels on either side of it and and now you're rounding you're getting close to your rounding keep that middle line on there that that line that goes all the way around the middle of it that's your goal. That's what you're heading towards. Curving towards that line, rounding the figure.
Now, if you listen carefully, you can hear the sound this knife makes as it cuts through the wood. I love that sound. That sound just makes me relax. And, uh, and it's, that's the sound of a sharp knife easily slicing through the wood. When the wood starts to crush as you're carving, it leaves a rough surface and you know your knife is dull. Do not carve with a dull knife. It's dangerous. Alright, so here's where we're at right now. I think it looks more like a bear from here because it's so big. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, is actually take off a whole outer layer here, which, which at this point isn't much. It's just the top part of the legs um, on either side. It's gonna make, you can see how I have these lines here and I was gonna make that the outermost part of the muscle structure of the leg, but um, I could take it down to that line and have this just be the leg. I won't go quite that far, maybe half, half of that. I'm gonna make them a little thinner. It's a little too wide. And this blade seems to be holding up a lot better than the other one. This is uh, one and three eighths inch. WK4. That's a nice blade. So I stopped, uh, stopped carving for a while to see if I could strop this out. And I've been stropping for, do is five minutes. And uh, you can still see it, it's not as bad, but still disappointed. All right, creating quite the pile of wood chips. So I got them thinner. He's down thinner. You can see how where I've taken the feet in uh, quite a bit. The legs are almost to the proper width still a little bit of fat there that needs to come off and now I'm gonna have to start rounding them over again so I'm gonna start taking these outer lines to the center line all the way around his body
Well, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. And join me next time for part two of wood carving a coon hound. And we'll do that raccoon too. Do a little scenery for it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.